It's Shalom One. Before I get started, I want to say, Kaal Holai Mlai Yehawah Ba'ashim, Yehawashai Ba'ashim, Racha Kodash, which means give our praises to the Heavenly Father Yehawah and His only begotten Son, Yehawashai, which is our Lord and Savior, and to the Holy Spirit. Natham Ashina Kabah Allah Hazukran, Shayas Allah, which means give the honors to the elders of Israel, which is the apostles and elders of great millstone, who teach and who will, and Shalom Wa Ahala Bachaya Shayas Allah, which means peace and love to the leg of Israel. And come back again to the spirit power of Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Chakodash, Anabora Ana, from Jimmy Smith's camp. You want to do a quick lesson on Esau, how you got doomsday bunkers uh, full of seeds. So I'm going to get into it. You know, I'm low willing, um, YouTube, don't give me a strike. I'm going to play two videos on this. And before I play, I'm going to read this article real quick. It's a um, little published March 23rd, year 2022. It's like year 2020, year 2020. It said famines are uh, man-made, so uh, uh, fill in the blank. Famines are man-made, so uh, fill in the blank. It said there's an, an important, important idea from the humanitarian sector that famines are not natural disasters. They're not caused by crop loss or droughts or even a lack of food. There always enough food in this world. It's just not reaching. Hold on. It's just not reaching the people who need it. Right? There always, there always enough food in this world. It's just not reaching the people who need it. Right? In this video, you go see why I brought this out. Which we know the Lord controlled man. You know, let's get a priest up on that real quick. The Book of um, Proverbs. Proverbs um, 20 and 24. It's This Proverbs 20 and 24. It said, man's goings, man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? Right. The most I control your uh, footsteps, man. I know such thing as free will and so on. I get another precept in the same book, Proverbs 16. And on uh, nine, it said, a man's heart devises his way, but the Lord directed his steps, right? I ain't no such thing as free will. So the most I control, man, at the end of the day. You know what? Proverbs <laughs> 19, 21. Yep, Proverbs 19, 21. It said, there are many devices in the man's heart. Heart going to your mind, the lob in the Hebrew. So there are many devices in the man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that should stand, right? They're going to stand. Because the Lord said, what the um, book of Job, the 33rd chapter, he said, what well, he sealed um, the instruction. Job, let me see, Job 33, start at 15. It said, in a dream, Job 33 and 15, in a dream, in the vision of the night, when deep sleep fall upon man and slumber was upon the bed, then he opened the ears of men and sealed it their instructions right. You know, because <laughs> the most I control your steps. I know such thing is free will, man. So he controlled man. You know, they say his um, families are man made, but guess what? The most I controlling it. And guess what? The most I is bringing famine, man. Let's get Ezekiel real quick. Uh, is it 14? Yeah, Ezekiel 14, let's start at 12. It said, The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, when the land sinned against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out my hand upon it, and will break the staff of the bread thereof, and will send famine upon it. Right? And will send famine upon it, and will cut off man and beast from it. Right? So, Mosai is in control of everything, man. You know what? In the same book, let's drop to Ezekiel 5 and uh, 17, I believe. Ezekiel 5, let's start at 16. He said, When I when I should send upon them the evil arrows of famine, which should be for their destruction, and which I will send to destroy you, and I will increase the famine upon you, and will break your staff for bread. Right? And the T of verse 16. I will shower you with deadly arrows of famine to destroy you. The famine will become more and more severe until every 
qualm of food is going. This is the time we're living in, man. We're hearing food shortages. Then you got Sleepy Joe, <laughs> you know, the pan of, in this article, they said the Biden, the council, the Biden administration would pay farmers more money not to farm. Then you got uh, Kira Hates buying up all the farmlands. It's talking about no weeks. You know, no crops and some shit, you know. All this is part of the Lord doing the most I send the family, man. Second Ezra 15, let's start at one. Behold, speak down the ears of my people. The words of prophecy. Who are the Lord people? The Israelites, the so-called Negroes, blessed Hispanics, Latinos, and Native American Indians, man. And whatever Israel has been scattered to across the countries whose spirit goes back to Israelite, man. We are the most I chosen people. He said the words of prophecy, meaning to speak before, which I will put in thy mouth, Said the Lord, why? So these are the words of Yahweh Shemashah. These are not our words. Matthew 10 and 20 say, Now ye that speak, but the heavenly Father was speaking in you, man. So it caused them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. Right? So prophecy, man. It's all about prophecy, man. Jump down to verse 5. It said, <clears throat> It said, Behold, said the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, this war, famine, death, and destruction. Right? Famine, man. So this is of the Lord. You know, so, hey, man made or not, the most high controlling it. Who control man at the end of the day? Yahweh Shem Shai. Those, they are um, the, uh, the true names. You know, Yahweh Shem Shai, man. So the most high control everything that you see, man. The most high, he's going to send famine to destroy you, man. Not for you to get right, you know. Because we've seen the food shortages. We've seen shortages of food and, and, and crops, you know, and, and so on. But guess what? This is of the Lord. You know what? So let's go and play this video, man. You know, Lord willing, YouTube, don't take it down. No, give me a strike. So let's play it. On Svalbard. It's, here I am on Svalbard. It's an archipelago, 800 miles from the North Pole. There are polar bears and glaciers, and also the most amazing genetic library I've ever seen. Hey guys, Trace here for D News. Thanks for tuning in. If you've never heard of Svalbard before, it's this place right here, way up on top of the planet, far away from civilization, but Svalbard might be one of the most important places in the world. It's really cool, and we get to go inside. You know, this is quite simply a, a hole in the mountain. <laughs> in there, you have actually 13,000 years history of agriculture. It's quite amazing. That's Marie Haga. She is the executive director of the Crop Trust, the group that oversees the Svalbard Global Seed Vault. Inside that vault are boxes, and inside those boxes? Seeds, quite simply seeds. So normally somewhere between 300 and 500 seeds in these aluminum foil envelopes. And that's all there is, nothing else. What is unique in Svalbard is that we collect seeds from absolutely all over the world, or countries, or institutions choose um, to use this as a backup facility. The main reason it's so far north is because Svalbard is cold. It's got a permafrost, meaning the ground never really thaws even in the summer. Most seeds um, can be stored long term at minus 18 degrees, or they can keep for a long time at, uh, at a temperature that isn't that uh, cold either. Um, but that's sort of the perfect temperature. By digging a 130-meter tunnel deep into the mountain, the vault is underneath that permafrost, meaning they only had to cool it the remaining 12 Celsius. At that temperature, the 860,000 varieties currently in the vault can be held for decades. Some wheat varieties could last a thousand years. But aside from serving as a backup for the global food machine, the seed vault also represents something else, a genetic library of evolutionary successes. Wheat originates in well, certainly the Middle East. Now we grow wheat absolutely all over the world. The thing is that it has taken many thousand years for these plants to move around the globe. The challenge these days is really that the climate changes so fast, so the plants are not able to adopt. And that is really the fundamental challenge for agriculture these days. And we need to help these plants to adopt faster. And that is why we need to introduce, for example, genes from a wild relative that can make sure that wheat can grow in funny climates with, for example, less water, or that it's able to fight a new disease that stems from 
climate change. So scientists are traveling the world to gather more seeds and bring those into the vault too. Because farmers don't want to grow all these crops in their fields because they need to make dollars. And they and agribusinesses will grow for yield. But when we choose yield over diversity, we lose genetic variety. We in the US only have about 10% of the variety of fruits and vegetables that we had 100 years ago. So if a disease strikes, say, bananas, like is happening now, Man, that banana green. <laughs> The they could go extinct. They all have the same immune system, and there's nothing we can do. There aren't any other varieties to experiment with, which is why we're cataloging and saving seeds in this vault. There are 3,000 varieties of coconuts, 4,500 varieties of potatoes, 35,000 varieties of corn, 125,000 varieties of wheat, or 200,000 varieties of rice. One of those might have the trait that we need in the future to adopt the rice to whatever it is, higher temperature, higher salinity in the soil, more unpredictable weather, a variety that can fight a new pest or a new disease. And for each one we lose, we lose options to develop plants with traits in the future. In the end, the seed vault isn't just a place where seeds wait to be genetically sequenced and grown again to secure our food supply for the next 9 or 15 billion people who live on the earth in the future. It's also a library of nature's trial and error from the past for dealing with the shifting planet that we live on. And it's one of humanity's greatest science projects. It's ongoing, it's complicated, and it's just plain awe-inspiring. Okay, so now you know why we need the seed vault. But what about for foods that don't have seeds? How did they get that way? Are they some kind of weird Frankenstein hybrid? Not always. It happens naturally from time to time. Check out this video and find out how we got seedless foods. In botany, breeding seedless fruit is called parthenocarpy. Parthenocarpic fruit. Yeah, we don't want that to seedless, but uh, you notice this video was five years ago. It's just crazy that hey, we don't know what the hell we eat, man. They said we are, let, don't let, let me get this real quick. Limitations. Uh, what's that, four? Is it limitation four? Bear with me. Limitation three and 22. It, it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because the capacity fail not, right? They are new every morning. Great is that faithfulness, man. Come on, man. You know? We don't know what we eat. The scripture said we should eat our food. Let the scripture do a talk. I want to say Ezekiel, the fourth chapter. This is Ezekiel 4 and 13. And the Lord said, Even thus shall the children of Israel eat the defiled bread among the Gentiles, whether I will drive them, right? Whether the Lord will scatter us, man. We eat defiled food. We don't know what we eat, man. You know? You got Esau coming out with loud meats, beyond meats, and so on, man. We don't know what we eat. Kim trails, spring. So it's out of the Lord mercy we know that we ain't consumed, man. Let's jump down to 16. Because famine is coming. They said, moreover, he said unto me, son of man, behold, I will break the staff of bread in Jerusalem, and they shall eat bread by weight and with care, and they shall drink water by measure and with astonishment that they may want bread and water and be astonished one with another and consume away for their iniquity. Right? And it's going to be for your punishment, you know, because you refuse to come back to Yahweh Shemoshah. You know what? Second Ezra 16. Be with me. Second Ezra 16 and 19. Man, the whole chapter good. Prophecy is speaking. It said the end is just speaking that line in the book of Habakkuk on the second chapter, 2 and 3. But let's start at 19. Let's start at 18. So like second and assistant 18. The beginning of sorrows and great mourners, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars, and the power should stand in fear. The beginning of evils. What should I do when these evils should come? Wait, what are you gonna do if you don't believe in a miracle, man? <laughs> what are you gonna do, man? If you don't believe in your house shot, man? Are you saying no such thing as Jacob Trouble? What are you gonna do, man? You know? If 19, behold, famine plagues. Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment, right? For a correction, man. For you, for what? For you to turn back. We turn back to Yahweh Shemashat, man. They said, but for all these things, 
They should not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges, right? So you're going to turn up in your wickedness some more. What it say? The whole head is, uh, is, is sick. You see? So come on, man. Let's jump. Hey, read this in the NLT of verse 16, Ezekiel 4 and 16. Then he told me, son of man, I would make food very skilled in Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is a people for a place, man. You know, one thing about American, you know, these niggas, they eat at least 13 times a day. You know, breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, snack, midnight snack. So, hey, people here in America eat all day long. These people don't know how to fast, you know. They don't know how to go eight hours without eating, you see. And that's just a number, but it said it will be weighed out with care. With great care and eating fearfully, the water will be rationed out drop by drop, and the people will drink it with dismay. Lacking food and water, people will look at one another in terror, and they will waste away under their punishment, right? So this is of the Lord. Remember, the Lord controlled both sides, good and evil. Should there be evil in the city and the Lord had not done it? What's the Amos? I, let's get Isaiah 45 uh, 7 real quick. It say, I form the light. And create darkness, I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things, right? They said in the NLT of verse 7, I create the light and make the darkness. I send good times and bad times, man. I, the Lord, Yahweh, am the one who does these things, man. So you can't blame Satan, you can't blame nobody, you can't blame man, you know, can't, hey. <laughs> This is of the Lord, man. The Most High control man at the end of the day. He control everything that you see. So the Most High going to bring you famine. He's going to bring chaos. That's why Revelation 13 and 16. Let's, let's read it. Because this is the time we in, man. You know? It's June 2. Come on, man. Revelation 13 and 16. He calls it all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. What is that mark? The mark is the Chawad mark, the RFID microchip, man. You know? It's, and that no man might buy or sell this. <laughs> you see? And that no man might buy or sell. How are you going to buy your food without this mark? How are you going to eat without this mark, the Chawad man? You see? How are you going to function in society once they implement this uh, Chawad man? The RFID microchip, man. Make it mandatory. How, what are you going to do? You see, and saying that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. You see? Let's play the other video. I don't want to make the lesson too long, but hey, this is the time we're in, man. Famine. Let's read 22. It said, For men are them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine. You see? A lot of people going to die of famine, of starvation, man. You see? You're going to commit to cannibalism and so on, man. It's the scriptures say. You know? It said, In the other that escape the hunger, should this war destroy right? Esau on your ass, man. Going back to Ezekiel. <laughs> All praise to Yahweh Shemesh, man. Ezekiel 5 and 17. So will I send upon you famine and evil beasts, and they shall bereave thee, and pestilence and blood shall pass through thee, and I will bring this war upon thee. And I, the Lord, has spoken it, right? So along with the famine, Esau on your ass, pestilence, diseases on your ass, and so on, man. It's going to be bad. It said, tell us you'll make you afraid on every side in the book of Job, man. So we're going to get bad, but getting back on E. <laughs> you, if you think you're going <laughs> to make it, it's because, you know, we're we, we going to have first fruits. You're the first fruits, <laughs> you know, of slavery. But you ain't going to come back to this. Let's play this other video, man, uh, from Vice. And, and, you know, Lord willing, don't give me a strike or nothing. You know, this is just for educational use on uh, Fair act, you know, I don't want no copyright, you know, whatever, however the shit go, man, you know. So this, um, it'll play it. This is a special place. Let's go deeper inside. We have prepared this seed vault for about 4.5 million seed samples. Welcome to the Global Seed Vault. This is a facility where we store copies of seeds from gene banks all over the world. So now we are entering a long tunnel which leads into the Global Seed Vault. 
Deep inside the Permafrost Mountain, close to the North Pole, is a storage facility with the capacity to store over 4 million different crops and a maximum of 2.5 billion seeds. The Global Seed Vault was created as a backup system for the world's gene banks to protect humanity against any catastrophes that could potentially wipe out our agricultural diversity. We are now quite deep in the mountain. When we pass this door, we are in the permafrost part of the rocks here. Now we are moving from approximately zero degrees into the permafrost section. We have the permafrost here, minus five. In there, it's minus 18. And here you can feel the atmosphere, it's silent. You can hear the echo. It's a very nice place to grasp the atmosphere of being in an important place. Some journalists call this the Noah's Ark of plant. <laughs> Some journalists call this the Noah's Ark of plant diversity. All right. Diversity, and personally, I think that's quite a good name. We call it the world's most important room. So. Let's go in. If the humanity can survive, we will need new plant varieties. And the material you need for developing new varieties are genetic diversity. We have seeds from all countries in the world. Kenya, Mexico, India, Peru, Germany, Colombia, Costa Rica, Zambia, Brazil, Australia. Here we have some nice wooden boxes from Tajikistan. Workers in gene banks, farmers have struggled to produce all these seeds and sent them here because they feel safe when they send the seeds here. Svalbard is a safe place. It's the permafrost here, so it's frozen even if the artificial cooling fails. And Svalbard is quite far away from conflicts. Conf conflict? Conflict of what? You see? America, Babylon, Great will be destroyed by nuclear fire, man. That's what they're keeping all this for, man. You see? Here we have boxes from Russia, and here we are have boxes from Ukraine. So, hey, all these countries, U.S., they, hey, these countries, they, they, hey, they got seeds sent over here, man. You know? I want to know, no, let's keep playing. Rain. And even if there are enemies abroad, outside, in this uh, seed vault, they cooperate. And here is some wooden boxes made in North Korea. So even North Korea have sent seeds here, and in the seed vault here, international conflicts are cooled down. You see this empty space in this shelf? We had seed boxes from Icardas Gin Bank in Aleppo. They sent seeds here from 2008, and when the Gin Bank in Aleppo was ruined, we were able to send the seeds back so they can start creating a new Gin Bank. This system saved the seeds. If they had no backup here, the seeds would have gone extinct. This is the world's largest collection of genetic diversity of crops. What you see in here is 13,000 years of agricultural history. The genes you find in here existed in the natural flora in the Middle East 10, 15,000 years ago. And then farmers started to use these plants and they improved the plants into the crops that we have today. There is in the seed vault about 70,000 different varieties of barley and 150,000 samples of rice and 140,000 samples of wheat. Researchers, they investigate what are the properties we find in these old uh, varieties. And they use the genes for making new varieties, for new purposes, for new growing conditions. Without this material, plant breeders, agriculture will never manage to feed the growing population. This is the raw material that we need for the future, that breeders need to make new varieties, to increase the world's food production. The work gene banks do every day, conserving their seeds, preparing the genes for future food supplies, is a very, very crucial and important work. I have quite good feeling when I'm in here and know that this is a resource that uh, the future will need. Seed goes extinct 
every day. And personally, it's a big motivation to think about all the work that has been done to bring the seeds here. And it feels very good to be a part of this global effort for future food supplies and conserve them in a safe place. So, right. And this video was a year ago, man. You know? It was a year ago. So let's end with Isaiah. O-E. So why is they food shortages and, and so on? <laughs> Isaiah 65. 13. He said, Therefore thus said the Lord, Yahweh shall much shall behold. My servants shall eat. Right? My servants shall eat. But ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye, but you shall be ashamed. Right? So you're not serving the Lord, you're going to starve. You know? You're not going to take part in this, man. If you're not serving the Lord, you have a shot, man. You know, you took your hand from the plow, you're going to be destroyed. 14. Behold, my servants shall sing for draw of heart, but ye shall cry for Salva a heart and shall have for vexation of spirit. Come on, man. This is the time we're coming into, man. We're coming into great tribulation, a time like no other famine, chaos, man. Jacob's trouble, you know. So, what are you going to do once that once that chip come, man? You know, you haven't eaten in, <laughs> in two days, your stomach touching your back. You know, you going to take Esau Mark. If you do, you're going to be put to death by, by, by on flaming. <laughs> Throw more nuclear missiles, man. Don't flaming airwaves, man. Revelation 14, 9 and 10 tell us that, man. You're going to take part in second death. You take Esau Kawakma, man. You know? Esau keeping all these seeds, all these food in this doomsday, doomsday bunk, you know? And your doomsday bunk ain't going to save you, eat, man. Because we go, you know, I know I said I'm going to end it. <laughs> I got to get this, Jeremiah 16. It's 16. It said, Behold, I was sent for many fishers, said the Lord, and they shall fish them, which we are fishing now. We fish for the elect through the spirit power of Yahweh Shemashai. Lord, will I'm part of the elect number. It said, Afterward, I sent for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. Lord, will I take part in this? You know? And what do a hunter do? Kill, man. You know what hunters do. Look at Esau when he hunt. When he hunt for sports, man. He don't, he, you see? So, hey, the Lord gonna turn us to hunters, man. He's so high in any bunkers. Hey, we go new once new Ju New Jerusalem come down from heaven, it's over with, man. You know, you ain't got to worry about this e for the future. Your seeds, your your, your gold and um, bunkers and so on. Whatever you got in your bunkers, man. You know, that's for us. <laughs> you know. So, hey, Lord willing, this lesson was edified. Lord willing, you know, they don't take the lesson down as well. But once again, we we'll give our praises to Yahweh by Shimon Shai. By Shem Hakodash, the honors to the apostles and elders of great men who teach and will wear peace and love to let with that shalom. Quran Allah, Wa Baba.